everyone and welcome back to my wine diary as you know we're in the midst of holiday season today as i'm posting this video it is christmas eve if you celebrate christmas merry christmas to you and happy holidays to everyone else as far back as november goes when we entered our holiday season here in the united states i decided to post some relative videos for maybe some preparations for your thanksgiving table or building a charcuterie board for your christmas or new year's party so all of those videos will be linked down below for you to check out and today marks another video when it comes to holidays and that is how to make a mold wine and mold wine or also known as spiced wine or glühwein in German where it comes from is just an alcoholic beverage that's made of red wine with all sorts of spices fruits sometimes raisins in it and frankly nowadays people started adding all sorts of things to mold wine to to spike it up a little bit and make it more interesting the recipe that i will be sharing with you today is just the recipe that i came up with following the basics let's put it this way but then i add my own touches to it and it always turns out amazing it's a staple on my family's table every single Christmas season this drink is so delicious so I can't wait to show you how I make it let's jump right in now before I show you the ingredients that I am using for my mold wine recipe I just wanted to remind you that mold wine or spiced wine blue vine whatever you want to call it is typically a winter drink so it's a holiday drink revolving around Christmas very popular in the mountains and the cabins if you like going skiing maybe or snowboarding so ski resorts are infamous for serving mold wine as well to warm people up um, and it's usually served warm or hot now you can serve it cold but typically and traditionally it is served warm now that I'm zoomed in on my ingredients here let's start with the basics so for the wine what wine do we choose I usually try to go with cheaper red wines and I'll explain wine in a second but here I have um, um, this Woodbridge Merlot nothing special about it frankly I wouldn't just drink this Merlot you know as drinking wine regularly uh, for me it's just not that high quality but for mold wine it's actually perfect guess what we will be bombarding it with all these other flavors here spices fruits um, everything else that goes in it so technically you do not have to have an expensive wine matter of fact I recommend for you not to spend a lot of money just get your cheaper red blend or cheaper Merlot or Cabernet Sauvignon and uh, use that so I have this large bottle here this is one and a half liters I believe so we're going to be using this I will be using some water and I will show you how much I'm adding mold wine for me is a lighter drink it's not as uh, high in ABV content as uh, your regular wines are especially red wine so I will show you how much I dilute it with water it's not going to be too much but just a little bit now on the fruit side my staples are oranges and apples so I love using apples I love using oranges some people like using orange zest instead of a whole orange I prefer oranges and another way to add that uh, citrus flavor to your mold wine would be to use an orange flavored liqueur so kind of like Cointreau here I will be adding just a little bit of it maybe like a cap or two to spike it up a little bit more but technically you could replace your oranges with an orange liqueur next up I have my sugar I will be using brown sugar because I think it adds um, some smoothness and this fudginess to our wine or mold wine so I feel like this one works better than just regular uh, white refined sugar so I'll show you how many spoons of this I use as well but I prefer uh, this brown sugar mine is organic coconut sugar but any brown sugar would do and the rest is really our spices so I have a lot a ton of spices here and I'll be using all of them so I have my cloves and I'll show you my trick with using them I'm not going to use a pouch for my mold wine so I'm actually throwing all of the spices in the pot and with that you either need to drain them or you have to be using a few tricks one of them I'll show you with the cloves per se then I have my cinnamon I have star anise I swear by star anise I absolutely love star anise uh, now you do have to be a little bit careful with your star anise because you don't want to overwhelm your drink with it but overall star anise to me is what makes my mold wine special and then with the rest of the spices here I have cinnamon sticks 
as well as ground cinnamon too. So both will go into the pot and then sticks will also garnish our cup or our glass once the mulled wine is ready to go and ready to be served. Then I have two more here. I have ground nutmeg. Look guys, if you're those people who can grind their own nutmeg root or whatever it comes looking like, uh, go for it. But I just use the ground nutmeg spice instead. And then I also have some coriander. So all of this, if it focuses for me here in a second, maybe want, but this is coriander guys, trust me it is. All of this is really everything we need to make our mold wine, except for that on a tool side, we have a large pot that we will be using. And I also have this little, um, this little jug to pour our mold wine afterwards. All right, you guys, let's go ahead and get started here. I already turned my stove top on and it is on about, uh, it's not really on low, but it's in between low and medium. So as we're starting with pouring our wine in, I mean, you definitely don't want to have your pot too hot at this point, because the more, the more we boil our drink, the more we evaporate alcohol. And technically we don't want to do too much because we still want at least 12 to 13% ABV in our mulled wine. So granted, we are already diluting it with water. Make sure not to overboil it. I set my temperature on the stove to about uh, medium to medium low. And um, I just don't let it boil because I don't want the alcohol to evaporate. It will evaporate some, but the goal is not to evaporate too much. So when it comes to our water, because we used a large amount of wine uh, to go in here, it's a whole liter and a half that I had, I'm going to use about one and a half to two full glasses of water. So I'm going to add this here and we're going to add one more full glass. This drink will be delicious, so don't worry about it being diluted. So two full glasses of water is what we need. As I poured our liquids in, I also turned my temperature to a little bit higher, so it's now closer to medium on my stove, and I'm going to slowly stir the liquids just to make sure that the water and the wine are mixed in together well. So we already talked about boiling wine too much. We definitely don't want to do that. Uh, the percentage of ABV, the goal is to keep it at about 13, like I said. So 13% would be awesome. Now, when it comes to spices, you guys, before I start throwing those in, um, I do want to give you some alternatives here. And really, I mean, you can experiment and throw very many different spices into your mold wine mix, but some people love adding vanilla extract to it or vanilla cloves or whatever you call them the little little sticks of vanilla in there you can add liquid vanilla in as well other things that people really like is fresh ginger so if you have a ginger root i would actually gladly add it i just don't have it handy so ginger root would be great and then bay leaves so if you have bay leaves at home you can add bay leaves here as well i prefer to stay away from bay leaves to me i just associate them with savory food and i just can't wrap my mind around them being in my mold wine but feel free if you want to so the second thing that we're going to do here is submerge our apples in this mixture so right away we're going to put them all in and I just cut mine in slices like this. I'm avoiding the end pieces of the apple, but look how cute it is. It actually has a little star on a cutout. I mean, it just looks fantastic. This whole drink looks so beautiful by the time it's finished that it's totally holiday, uh, totally merry and totally awesome. Next up is our sugar. So with brown sugar or coconut brown sugar that I have here, the reason why I put my apples in first, it will be a little challenging for me to mix everything in right now, but I wanted my apples to go first because I feel like they take the longest to absorb wine in them and disperse the apple flavor into the mixture. So I usually try and put them in as soon as I can. So when it comes to our sugar, I'm going to reach in and I'm going to use three full tablespoons of brown sugar. So I'm going to get this in. I 
After three spoons of sugar were added in here, I'm going to mix it all really nicely. Now the trick that I wanted to teach you here with our spices, especially with spices that are smaller in size, unless you want your guests to keep spitting out those spices from their glass as they catch them when they drink them, um, I suggest doing this. First of all, it looks absolutely gorgeous and it really helps us filter things uh, in the ready milled wine. So what we're doing is we're sticking our cloves in the orange. So cloves we have an advantage with just because they come in this like spiked form. So they have a tiny little spike to them. So because of that, it's super easy for us to just go ahead and stick them in the orange like this. So I just go all the way around and I love a lot of cloves. So I'm going to definitely overdo this one and stick a lot of cloves in mine. Now that our oranges are spiked with cloves, they're going to go right into the mixture. So let's submerge them one by one. So now I'm ready to pour my spices in and I'm starting with coriander and ground nutmeg here. And as I'm pouring these into the mixture, I just wanted to mention something to you. So the word mold wine comes originally from Glühwein, which is a German word. And that word in Germany means uh, blush wine or uh, glow wine, really. So glue means glow. And the idea is that after you drink this wine, your cheeks become rosy and you truly get that nice glow. Next up is our cinnamon, both ground and sticks. Of course, for Americans and for uh, people who don't speak German, it's a little bit tricky to say Glühwein, so that's why people just started calling it mold wine for the ease of pronunciation, and some people call it spiced wine. Last of the spices, but certainly not least. Matter of fact, it is my absolute favorite, our star anise pieces. So I am going to see, how many do I have in the, in the bag here? I actually think I'm gonna go crazy and add all of them in. So let's see, look how beautiful the spice is. I mean, this is the most holiday-like looking spice for me. It's just so beautiful. So I'm going to throw all of them in. I don't think it will be too overwhelmingly Anisi, <laughs> that's a word, but nevertheless, I'm putting everything in. Let's give it a nice stir and get ready for the last ingredient. You guys, the very last thing that we're going to add is our orange tasting liqueur or orange flavored liqueur. This one is Cointreau. I use this one for my Cosmos every once in a while, so I had it in the house readily available. Now, I'm not going to put too much in. I still want it to taste like wine, like spiced wine, but this will give us a little bit uh, of an orange accent, so to say, on top of the oranges that we already have. So I'm going to use two caps here. Take the same cap that this Cointreau came in and pour two of them into our mixture. Let's go ahead and do that. Cointreau is a really cool liqueur. It's very sweet though, so you gotta be really careful with it. Do not overwhelm your mold wine with it. And voila, everyone, all of the ingredients are now in. We have to give it a nice, good stir and leave it on a stove anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour, depending on how, how strong you want your mold wine to absorb all of the spices. Definitely keep an eye on it and keep stirring your mold wine uh, whilst it's cooking and don't let it boil, at least for a long period of time. I would say don't let it boil at all because all of your alcohol will eventually evaporate if it keeps boiling, but definitely keep stirring it probably every five minutes or so give it a nice stir it's okay to try it as well to just see how it's turning out or if you need to add anything else to it but i usually like just to leave it alone and come back to it <laughs> anywhere from 30 to 40 uh, to an hour and um, be ready to transfer our wine into a different vessel so stay tuned i will see you once the wine is done it is much later in the day <laughs> What I did is I basically turned my mold wine to low heat after about 30 minutes of it being on the stove and I kept stirring it about 
every five minutes or so. So after about an hour total, I turned everything off. I let it cool on its own, didn't put it in the fridge or anything like that. And then once it was lukewarm or maybe a little warmer than lukewarm, I transferred it into this jug here. So I ended up with a beautiful mixture and a beautiful tasting mold wine that I just wish I could really tell you how wonderful it tastes. I have a little bit in my glass here ready to go. I'll also insert pictures of how beautiful it really looked because this camera is really not doing it any justice whatsoever. This mold wine turned out to be absolutely gorgeous. So guys, just remember few simple things here. Do not overboil your mold wine. Experiment with different spices and enjoy. <laughs> I mean, mold wine is just such a seasonal, beautiful drink and I cannot wait for you to try it. So if you end up trying my recipe, please let me know in the comments down below. Even if it's after the holidays, I would love to know your opinion and how you liked it. If you have a different recipe for your mold wine, let me know, maybe you have some family recipe, anything, share those with me down below in the comments too. And if you still haven't subscribed to my channel, please do a Christmas miracle and Christmas present for me and subscribe to my channel. It really helps my channel grow if you subscribe. The subscribe button is right down below together with that notification bell. Guys, happy holidays, Merry Christmas if you celebrate it. And until next time, cheers everyone.